Welcome back to PolPolitikin.com, your home for self-help meets hip-hop. Make sure you go on Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, mostly YouTube now, because I'm trying to get that YouTube checked. Follow me, PolPolitikin. One, two, one, two, I'm place to be with my homie, INF. How you doing, bro? Doing good, man. How are you? I'm good. Why do you call you INF? It, okay, so INF is, it, it used to be short for infinity, but like 06, 07, like me and my bro, me and my older brother, uh, Nuke, we was just having this conversation like, yo, man, INF should mean something, you know? It should mean something that, that people want to follow. And, and appreciate the message. And he was like, yo, I'll never fail. Name yourself, I'll never fail. I'm like, I fail a lot. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, I failed a lot in my life. And he was like, nah, I mean, it, it like when you, you say I'll never up. fail, you get back yeah, up. It, doesn't mean, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that I didn't fail. It means that, you know, you lost so many times, about time, it's about time to start winning. You know, so that's pretty much the message. You know, and, where you from? Um, uh, Rochester, New York, upstate, uh, about an hour away from Buffalo. So how you got involved with music? Um, I was always a sponge when I was a kid. I'd say around three, four years old, like I was at my aunt Margie and Granny's house in Harlem. And um, this is like one of the only families that had cable around the time. So like when mama said, knock you out, came out. And and that went across the TV that I was like, yo, I don't know what this is, but I want to do this. And then as years went past, I started listening to more music and, and, and hip hop. And then around like nine years old, like I started freestyling a lot with my my, my older cousin, Ty Nitty. And um, that was around the same time me and JD met. And I just like, I wanted to do it for real. And I started writing around that time. And you know, as as I gotten older, I started to understand what it meant to to be able to express how you feel musically on 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 paper and you know voice wise, and I, it just stuck with me. And like as things continue to happen in my life, it's been my my way to to it's been a sort of release therapy for me, if you will. So because of because of hip hop, because of rap, like it's it's the reason why I can. I owe a lot of credit to it for me being alive today. You You're know, like, are you Latino? No, nah, I'm black. I'm black. Oh shit! I was you like you Latino in that video I was watching the headshot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell. I'm like, well, he look black, well, but shit, I'm like, well, you got that little kind of, you had a little, you know, little uh, little bounce. <laughs> yeah, like little little bounce to you, so I couldn't tell. Yo, I might, I might be somewhere near there. Like you, you never know. My family, my family got so many different, like so many different origin points. Like I know my mom is like really light, you know what I mean? Like, like to the point where she used to be reached out to in Spanish. She was like, who the hell is you talking to? I don't uh -huh. speak. <laughs> so, so yeah, my mom, my mom was really light and my dad, he's like, he's like, Two shades darker than me. Mm. And then, uh, what did you wake up listening to this morning? I didn't listen to anything, unfortunately. I, I like if it were my choice, like, and I didn't have to just get up and go right to this computer to do my job. It would have been Sade. Would have oh, been so Sade. You, you can't listen to music while you work. Nah, not really. Like, unless I'm offline, like, answering tickets and stuff like that, like, I could, but, like, I try, I try not to as much, but when I do, like, I do listen to, to some new joints, like, that, that Freddie Gibbs joint. Oh, yeah. That like, Freddie Gibbs, that Freddie Gibbs joint is, yeah, it's, 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 what is it, Alfredo? Yeah, Alfredo is crazy. Yeah, I got a shout out Gibbs, that's the past guest of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, he he, body, he bodied that project for real, man. Like, yeah, I would say, uh, but don't even with the customer service jobs now, don't they got that shit? Like, it's like most of the time, you know, especially when you're doing when you're like in the chat room in them in it, you're like talking mm -hmm. to bots, right? It's not really like that. It's like. So usually, most customer service jobs, like how it goes, is if someone is asking it. Like, you basically have macros that you have to put in, like, to basically speed up the efficiency or whatever to make sure the efficiency is on point. But, like, if there's a specific question that's not within the realm of the macros you use, you got to respond natural. Like, all right, well, this is 
you know, I could definitely help you with that, blah, 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 type type mess. But that's usually how it goes. Like a lot, a lot of cases, a lot of cases, companies, you know, want a united response to particular questions. So there's no confusion between um between what one person says and what another person says. Yeah, you didn't tell me uh, what shot eight song you gonna play. Oh, the shot eight man. I listened to her whole catalog. Like, like when it was when it was open, we can travel and stuff. I listened to her whole joint, but I start with stronger than pride. I start with that. All right. Got to start with that. What's your What's your top five? My top five shot A or nah. top five rap? Top five <laughs> rap. Okay. All right. All right. So top five rap. It changes a lot. Like it depends on. If we if we talking about lyricism or overall impact, if we talk on lyricism, I'm gonna put Big Daddy Kane at the top, Rock Kim number two. Um I'd say Hove number three, uh Eminem number four, and the fifth. Like that's always hard to pick. But I gotta give Tretch's props as far as as far as uh lyrical. Tretch? Um overall yeah, Tretch. Tretch is Tretch is like unmatched in, in a lot of cases, but he doesn't get his props as much as he should. Um let's say overall impact, I'm gonna say Pac number one, Biggie number two, Pun number three, Jay Z number four, and L L number five. Yeah, I like all that. The lyrical list, how you had Kane number one, then you had Jay, because yeah. kind of Jay came from from Kane, but people don't be recognizing yeah. that. Like when you when, when you think about it, it's like all right, you you like we we like for those who who tuned into hip hop, we know where where Jay started. Jay started pretty much because of Kane, and Nas basically got his influence from yeah. Rock Him. Yeah. So those are the two those are the two pillars that really <clears throat> that really uh got you know should get the notoriety ahead of time. Like like right. Grandmaster Cass Grandmaster Cass doesn't get his props, but you got you got the Sugar Hill gang record that was obviously biting from from Grandmaster Cass and, and his crew. Yeah, see so it's like seem like you a real hip hop head over there. Seem like you know a little bit. Seem like you know you a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> a, a little bit. I still I still got more to learn, but like I, I I had I had no choice but to but to learn a lot in order to do this because it's like if you don't if you don't know where where this stems from, where this comes from, and you just coming out and doing this, then I don't I don't see you I having have a real that, uh, I interview people that don't know and don't care and they just doing their thing and they sometimes some of them pop like that. They don't but I feel Yeah, like they do. You can't be like you gotta know like any to me, I say any industry you, you are in, if you understand the history and the culture of that industry, it's gonna help you more than just going in there blindfold. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you have to you have to understand. You have to study the greats to, to to be better, you know? And it's like I'm not knocking anybody who's doing what they're doing now that doesn't have that knowledge of history. And most they're most likely gonna blow, unfortunately, with the with the, whatever trend is is hot right now. But like for me, like it's my journey is really about staying true to myself, also also making sure that I make dope shit that people can feel and, and, and understand from a universal aspect while still being myself and while still making sure that I'm, I'm lyrically, I'm lyrically where I'm supposed to be and paying homage to those before me, because a lot of this stuff is basically like a lot of this music, like when it comes to lyricism, you know, this stuff has been said before, you know, like on, on a whole bunch of albums before. So it's really about, we we really the remix culture right now, and you know the sooner I feel like the sooner folks realize that you know we're we're just modifying the style or simplifying the style depending on which type of uh, music which type of rapper you want to be, then it is what it is. Well, I've been saying that's why as a rapper I feel like you always got to add your story to it because if you add your story to it, it ain't no remix. It's your story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. 
And it's like, you know, this, as each day passes, the story continues. So it's like, as, as long as you're still breathing on this earth, you can talk about what's going on currently, what's been, what happened in your past, and what you foresee yourself as doing in the future. So you what's know? your story? And so my story is, uh, you know, I was born in a single parent household. You know, that story is, you know, often in the beginning. Dear mama. <laughs> Dear mama. <laughs> Ain't no woman alive that could take my mama place. But um, so my mom had three kids, um, um, and I was the youngest of three. Um, my oldest is eight years older, uh, older than me. And since dad wasn't there, he was pretty much the father figure that you know I had to tap into. And he was too young to be a father figure, but he he knew we had to basically lead the camp. Um, my second oldest brother on my mom's side, a middle child, he passed away in 06. He was killed. And, um, you know, that real, that, that particular moment really like pivoted my life into, into basically changing what, what I want to do musically and what, what angle I was trying to go for. Um, so pretty much grew, grew in that, um, on my father's side, I have like, um, so, so. You know, before before my brother was killed, like, you know, my life was, you know, knucklehead, just trying to be trying to fit in with some folks and and realizing that, like, those folks really didn't give a fuck about you as much as, you know, your day ones or your close friends who actually understand who you are as a person. And I was really close, like I was really close to my brothers on my mom's side, as opposed to my my my, my siblings on my dad's side, because my dad you know, wasn't really around as much. So I didn't really get to meet my, my siblings like that until I was 10 years old. But then, you know, my brothers on my mom's side were always there. So that was pretty much my immediate family. But in 06, um, my brother was uh, shot and killed in a car by one of his supposedly homeboys in the back seat. And I was going to college at that time, you know, trying to, you know, do the school route, even though it, I, I didn't really feel like school was, was for me, not college wise, because it just, I, it was not registering to me that well, you know, but and after, after he got killed, I was just like distraught, stressed, depressed, wanted to go myself, you know, and I figured out that the music aspect was the, the way to both help me get through things. And I started to realize that at that time it was the, you know, the, the move for me to make, to help inspire others, to help them get through things because we are who we are based on our experiences and our version of truth is based on, you know, how we were taught growing up by our parents and our environment, you know, and it's, it's, it was a hard journey, but I'm, I'm like me being the age that I am now 33 years old. Like I finally feel like I'm at a place where I know where I want to go. I know how I want to inspire. I know what I need to do musically to inspire. And just by being the person that I am, you know, continue to do good shit, be kind to people and support those who, who genuinely want to do better and care, you know? So that's where my message really comes from. Like it comes from my personal experience and, you know, not everybody's experiences is, is, is the greatest. And I'm one of those whose experience wasn't the greatest, but I'm here and I'm, you know, pushing forward, you know, after that. And I want you to, how would you describe your sound to a deaf person? Whew. That's a really good question. <laughs> um, I would describe my sound as, hmm. I would describe my sound as. Remember, I'm deaf. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> it's a combination of calm waves and tsunami waves. Like it's with construction in the background. You know what I mean? Like. I'm trying to build myself and figure out how to coast in this current that we have called life. And 
the coast of this current is not easy because it's always going it, to, it, it can continue, it can get really rough and it can get really calm at times. Like and that is really a writer or something. You need to write a book or something, right? Talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> True. Writer, shit. Robert, shit. Yeah, Robert like, He's my... yeah, I like that's that's definitely something that I like to do, you know, later down the line. Like even even now with this time that we have, like I've been I've been, you know, trying to figure out like what else I could do aside from music because I know that I, I have it as far as like music wise and, 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 and what we're doing as far as creativity wise, like I know that that's going good and, 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 and people are starting to, you know, gradually, you know, listen to me and that's a beautiful thing. Um, but like, I always wanted to write, write books, um, write a, um, write a, like write a television story, like a show for television, like so many ideas that, that bounce off my head that, you know, it's like, why not, you know, you're on this earth one time, why not, you know, try other things while you're focusing on, you know, the pattern that you have. Yeah, you got to check so. out my IG. I just interviewed a producer. That was my last post. Oh, word. Yeah, yeah he did that movie, uh, First Lady 1 and 2 with Hoops. Oh, right, right, right. All right, yeah. bet. I'm going to definitely yeah. check that out. Yeah. Definitely check that so, out. Uh, what projects you working on? Um... Right now, I'm working on this project called uh, "Here From Here to Infinity." It's a, uh, it's um, it's basically about the, the the journey that from point A to point B. Like, imagine yourself, you know, at a starting point, and that starting point, you're at the the, the lowest part of your life. Or let's say you start off with a hoopty, right? Like everybody, like everybody we know may know somebody or has had a hoopty before as they first car. Something where to get them from point A to point B. But as you're driving, you know, that car switches out for another car, right? And when you get to the end of it, you're driving a Porsche or a Lamborghini or something like that. Yeah, That's I like from, the. I went from a uh, 96 Central to a Z. Shit, I came a long yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mental concept of, you know, the journey of immaturity to, to maturity. It's the journey of. You know, being in a in a in a difficult place and getting to a place of peace is, you know, it's really like similar to a tombstone. Like you have the starting point and the end point. What can you do um, before your end point to make you know your legacy be infinite? You know, to make it so that people will never forget you. And I feel like artists like Tupac definitely did that. You know, and I feel like this is gonna be that particular album that that will define me you know in in this current place in that of, of life that i'm in right now um i do yeah that's that's pretty much the concept and we want it to be we want it to be like this we're not shooting we're not we're not necessarily shooting for it to be a classic we're just shooting for it to be a, a an amazing body of work that you'll want to listen to 10 years, 15 years, 20 years from now, mm. you know, like life after death is one of those projects where you can put it on today and it'll still hit. It'll still, hey, it'll still be. Hey, don't be talking like this. You better be dropping some heat. You talking like this. Look, man, like <laughs> we are products. Like, I'm man, not man. like, this is like, this isn't, this isn't me trying to like, this isn't me trying to like, brag this is me talking about like what what i'm influenced by and everybody like every artist out there every hip-hop artist out there is going to try to make a project that's better than their previous one or try to make a project that's better than someone else's best like it's going to be impossible to match thriller it's going to be impossible to match the chronic it's going to be impossible to to make a better record than midnight marauders like you can't like these saying, projects. If, if you yeah. saying those names, then you you gonna be like, oh, this dude better be dropped some fire. He's saying he's. You like, know. I'm gonna I'm gonna try I'm gonna try my absolute best. And the best thing the the good thing about the good thing about this journey is I have people in my corner that'll let me know when shit is whack or let me know that I have to rewrite something. Like, you and I want to hear this shit because you talking. So I'm gonna make sure I hear this. <laughs> or are you? <laughs> 
Well, but as of, as of right now, we just we just pushing uh, instrumentals too right now, hosted by DJ Tony Touch, mixed by DJ Got Now, and that's just like it's just fun. It's just like you know what, this mixtape. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do what I want to do. I also want to you know make sure it's something that people can feel, something that people can bounce to, something that people will want to rewind because they want to hear me spit, they want to hear bars, they want to hear they want to hear nothing but dope shit and. I just, I just had, I've had a lot of fun doing this project. So that's is old, that. That's an old DJ, yeah. right? DJ Tony Touch. Yeah, DJ Tony Touch. He's a legend, man. Hey, you um, hooked up with him. Uh, I hooked up with him back in, I'd say back in 2009, 2010 um, was when I met. Actually, 2008 is when I met his brother, D Zilla. Um, D Zilla and my cousin. Um, Jerron, they used to work with each other like across from Wall Street in New York City, right? And um, my cousin was just hitting me up like, yo, man, you gotta meet you gotta meet Danny, you gotta meet Danny, cool people. It's like, you know, send him some of your shit. And I'm like, all right. He's like, what's, like, why you want me to do that? Like, yo, man, that's a link to Tony Touch. That's his brother. I'm like, oh, word? Let me see. Let me see what's going on. And um, I actually linked up with D Zilla and just we just clicked instantly and made dope shit back, you know, when I used to visit New York City as opposed to living there. Um, and um, I'd say 2010, he put out a project called uh, So It Begins. And that has KRS One, AG from Digging in the Crates, um, uh, who else? Just a lot of people on there. Um, Sabam Sadiq, um, uh, Shaheem was on there. And uh, he wanted me to be a part of it. And KRS is track number one, and I was uh, track number five on that. And I was hosted by Tony Touch then. Mm. And then um, and then we made the um, and then uh, I went out to um, the the release party. It was March sixteenth, two thousand ten, and that's when I met uh Tony, uh, Tony Touch for the first time. Met Cool Herc for the first time. I mean, it was just a lot of people there, and I've never like that particular moment. Like that's when. Like going there and seeing how folks just mingle, like it's 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 normal to them to just be around each other. Like that's their normalcy. It it was something new to me, and I and I felt like, yo, this is gonna be dope. And then um later on, like me and JD, we were trying to um create the concept for the 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 first installment of instrumentals, and uh, we needed a DJ to host it. So I was reaching out to uh, Dan. He was like, yo, man, who um, you know, any DJs that'll be able to host this? And he was like. I could see if my brother can do it and we figured it out and got that ironed out. And, um, that's how the first one came out and we did the same thing for this one. Okay. Yeah. What's up? So what's next for you? Where you see yourself like, uh, say five years from now, five years from now, I really hope to be able to literally just make money off of my music solely and not have to work a day in my life. Like, doing what I love, which is music, and that's not going to be work in itself because it's something that I enjoy. Like, I do want that to be the case, um, have kids, of course, and, um, you know, show them, you know, show them what I've learned and, and be the best father that I can be um, and just be very successful in what I'm doing um, to the point where, to the point where I, I, I can you know, share this with other people, you know, other people who are inspiring to be a dope ass artist or, or whatever they want to do in life and see what I can do to help others. Like I also see myself, you know, doing some, doing some work within my community, you know, helping, you know, helping change things in the neighborhood and, and be the forward progress that we need as black folks to, to succeed because right now, like especially right now, it's is definitely an eye opener for a lot of people and we're starting to see who's really who's really for the cause and who's just trying to make sure they don't lose money. <laughs> it's 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 a lot, you know, but that's where I really wanna be. Don't, Successful don't musician. Think I be, uh, like what I kinda just notice with people, I'm like, man, it'd be funny to me because it'd be like I don't I don't understand what people motive are sometimes because like they go protest but then they're on live or they yeah. like, take all these pictures and post the pictures the same damn day i'm like, like damn you ain't like, get home yet you already on your phone trying to post the pictures like on some, 
Yeah. Black Lives Matter. Marching, nah, man, marching, we ain't. You, you marching, you holding the sign, and you with your phone trying to take a picture. I'm like, man. Black, Black Lives Matter. Hey. Yeah. Like, to yeah. me, I yeah. look at it because I was a Marine. So it's like, man, you, you don't go no shit like that, no shit like that. You don't even bring, nah. like somebody even said, you don't even fucking bring your fucking phone. Cause they track you and every fucking thing. So you don't even bring, leave your phone home anyway. So it's exactly. like people doing shit for uh, clout, man. So that's why I'm kind of looking at people now like, man, that shit like kind of like a trend now, bro. Like now, especially with a lot of other races, they probably feel some mm-hmm. kind of way. Like if they don't do nothing, then we gonna say something. Like, hey. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like it's 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 it is crazy. Like it's it's really hard to determine who's who and what's what in this case. Like yeah. what we do, what we do know is what we're supposed to do, what we should do. And you know, we do have companies that 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 were against against this movement, and now they're for the movement. Like, how do you feel about the how do you feel about the NFL situation right now? Them apologizing uh, and saying that saying that Kaepernick was right this whole time. Like, I you know, you know. Like, like, my whole yeah. thing is even, okay, with Kaepernick, like, it was a lot of stuff that escalated it, so that could have probably helped a little bit. And then even how Obama was talking, I'm like, fool, a lot of this shit happened when you was the president, so you could have did this shit too. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, don't be coming out now. It's like, this ain't nothing but, like, this momentum. That's all yeah. this Because, like, all them, like, Cause you know you ever saw that sheet and they got everybody that died. Yeah, yeah, All the black yeah. People? Man, I guarantee you, like eighty percent of them was when Obama was president. Uh yeah. You, you, so you, it's I, like, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. You know I'm do saying think... like, don't. I'm mean, like, what did you do? What did you do? Why, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So why you like to me? It's like no shit. You know Trump ain't finna do shit because all Trump got to say is Obama didn't do shit. So he, like, he it was Obama's fault. Shit. Yeah, he, it was his fault. Nah. Like, but like for me, I already knew that because it was like, man, it, it wasn't nothing. Like I think the only thing that happened for black people when Obama was president was that museum. I think yeah, that. Was- that oh, <laughs> speaking of that, speaking of that, that museum is dope. By the way, have you been yet? Nah, man, fuck that museum. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Like, 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 I, I get it. Nah, hear me I'm out like, there. Hear me. <laughs> oh, hear, me. <laughs> hear me out though. Hear me out. Um. Me and my wife went uh, last December uh, to that museum, right? And, like, the whole psychological construct of that museum is about starting from the slave, like, like the slavery times up until today. And, like, you have to wait in a long, like, there's a long-ass line, right? And you're going in droves and stuff to get to the bottom of the, um, to get to the bottom of the museum, right? And, you you mentally you mentally got to think about the aspect of what slavery was where you being ripped from your homes and being put in long lines put in like compact uh being uh put in a compact situation where you are going in droves till you get to this destination we get to the destination and we're going through the the, the slavery times and they're talking about what slavery meant like what type of people what type of people that were our ancestors that they were um uh taking from africa to america and the uh surrounding areas and they were taking like um they were taking mathematicians they were taking you know um architects scientists things of that nature they were taking people who were like literally smart they weren't just taking random people who didn't you know have a value which is messed up that they did this, right? And then you come to realize with all this information that they have that America was literally built on the backs of our ancestors. Of course, we already knew that, but it's but it's really the, the, the journey of what that actually looked like, right? And then I saw one, um, I saw one uh, timeline, um, timeline list of, uh, list of things that were said about slaves and stuff like that. And one one particular line that got me was that we were considered prime uh, real estate, so we were we were not even human beings; we we're just straight up property, and we were the reason why America was built, you know, this way, was because of us. And and like I say, us meaning our ancestors, because there's also, you know, a a genetic a genetic historic like. A genetic historic timeline of how we feel you know how we feel is how they felt 
you know, to an extent, of course. And how it's how slavery to an extent is still happening today, the construct of, you know, work and jobs and things like that are built off of what slavery was. Like efficiency itself was built off of slavery itself. Like let's say there was a let's say somebody was doing something and they did it better than others. That mark was the mark that others had to reach the next day. And I would, you know, drive people to like literally be exhausted and stressed out. And that sounds like what we're going through today to an extent. Like we need to set expect, like we're going to set expectations really high and you have to achieve this or you'll be punished for it. And that punishment in today's society is either losing your job or being put on a performance improvement plan and things of that nature. But that's just that part. And as you go higher up in the um uh, in the uh, museum itself, you go through different uh different uh, cultural moments. Like they have the Tulsa riots in there. They have the Emmett Till Memorial Service where you can't have um, cameras in there or or cell phones on at all. And you're literally going to the Emmett Till Memorial Service, like you're in a funeral service during that time. And they also have um they have a lot of like a lot of information. And it's free for entry since it's like part of the Smithsonian um museums in DC. But like out of all of the museums that I've ever been to, that one felt like really personal as it should and it, it seems like they really took the time and effort and energy to you know teach us and teach these folks that you know racism is still alive and well and like I definitely I definitely will go again at some point when, when I have kids and things of that nature but like that that took a lot out of me it really did but I'm saying, I mean, but what does it do? Like, I mean, that's cool to know about it, but I don't know. I don't see that as a resource. I mean, I'm talking about I see. <laughs> like, I'm saying, what is it? Like, you know, like, yeah, you like, do it and you know it now. So, like I'm saying, that didn't true. help with all this stuff that's going on now. We still, that came out, but we still where we, we at. So I'm saying, we yeah. need that's going to help us today. Oh, I don't, I don't disagree with you on that. I was just basically saying that, like, like experiencing it is 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 one thing and once you experience it maybe you have the same point of view maybe you won't but it's it's really a it's it's really a journey in and of itself and seeing people that don't look like me and experience it like to see either either their minds are being changed or like also seeing like who's standing up walking through this and who's sitting down like i noticed that too like a lot of white people were sitting down taking breaks and stuff like that and we were just going through it like yo man we got to get through this whole thing it'll it literally it will really take two days to to see the whole museum mm. it'll take two days but i yeah i definitely get that and i don't i don't disagree on the aspect that we need more than just a museum we definitely need reparations and and just to be viewed as equals, like, consider us equal, like, for real. We still don't feel equal. Like, we want to. We really want to, but there's so many there's so many obstacles that we got to go through to get promoted to manager or get a loan or, 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 or get a mortgage or even get a home, you know, just get even to rent something, like, to get a job. There's all there's these extra hoops that we got to get through, like our names, because our names look the way it does, like they don't look at our resumes and stuff. So it's like it's a it's a complicated it's a complicated journey. But right now it's it's we need we definitely need change more than ever. We always needed it. But like we'll see. We'll see what happens. Like, do you believe these uh, cops going to are going to get um, uh are going to get the, the um convicted? Mm. They probably will just cause of now, just to die down this shit. They probably will, but it ain't gonna be no like the main. It's gonna be like a lesser punishment for sure. Yeah, like I, like I, some like shit might fuck around to get a misdemeanor. <laughs> yeah, okay. they don't give, that, give it as misdemeanors. Everybody go, but no, nah, they got to do something just to quiet everybody down. So they got to do something. Yeah. Cause if you don't do anything, it's gonna get worse. So yeah, and it's like you know. 
in like 2014 when Eric Garner and Philando Castile was killed and 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 names that are like just so so much to bear like as far as the the videos of them being killed and stuff like that that happened like six years ago and we're in a situation where the pretty much the same thing happened this time around and the difference the difference between then and now is more people are out of work due to COVID-19 and so that they can continue to protest right like mine as well you know but what really gets me is what really is getting me right now is just the fact that so many companies are are trying to be for the cause when they were against it previously. And I don't know if you've been noticing all of the people that are like losing their jobs and stuff like that because they said something racist in the past. Like I find that like that's it's crazy because that's like the main topics right now. Yeah, I like thought aside you, know, from, um, you know what Indeed is, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I saw they post some Black Lives Matter shit on there. I was like, fuck that, give us some of them damn jobs. <laughs> Sitting there posting exactly. that shit on there, like, oh, fuck it. I'd be scared to put on black on my shit. I'd be putting opt out on shit, or, or decline to identify. I'd be like, shit. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think you put black, they don't hire you from the job. They probably be exactly, like, man. Uh, uh, Pacific Islander, uh, African slash American, or like Native American, like, we don't, like, we know we're black. You know, so we usually check the, we usually either check African American or check none, so we can get to the next level. But it's like, come on, man, you don't need. What does this matter? But I was what, thinking, I was like, man, I was like, maybe if you put none, they know you black. So I was like, I'm gonna start putting two races or more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because let's be real, like we probably are more than two races. Yeah. Like we probably. I am for my 23 and me. Shit, my 23 and me said I got uh, like 13 percent. Uh, White, so I be claiming that shit sometimes. <laughs> you know, the only reason, I, only reason I claim it, cause I did my answer. I did the, uh, the, uh, I did the twenty three and me. So the twenty three and me was saying I'm related to Nelson Mandela and um, Pharaoh Ramsey. That's why I be using that. Oh, that's what's up. That's yeah, what's but, up. You but but I, did, I was doing the, uh, I was doing like the the family tree, the DNA one, the family tree. And I went all the yeah. way back to like, because it said the 23 and me was saying I got like 13% white. So I went all the way back to like a baron. I was like, damn. Oh, really? Yeah, they didn't like my 23rd granddad or something. Wow. I was like, I, was like, I got to claim that. If he, if he white, I'm going to claim that just to say I, I, I'm related to a baron. <laughs> yeah, now I'm related to a baron. Yeah. yeah. That's some kid that baron ass. money. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I get, some. get that baron paper, like for real. Nah, like, man. Yeah, I gotta, What's up? Now I was saying, like, yeah, I gotta, I, I really do gotta check that. Like, the closest thing that I have to like, like someone that's that's of significant importance, like in my history, is uh, my great great grandfather J. W. Thompson. He was uh in uh Rochester, New York. He was um responsible for uh, erecting the first statue of a black man in America, the the Frederick Douglass statue mm. in Rochester. Um, him and him and Frederick Douglass used to communicate a lot, and um, he used to be my great great grandfather was um, pretty much a treasurer and and funded a lot of things in my hometown, and um, he was able to get he was able to get he asked for five thousand dollars to get the statue erected, right? But he was able to get three, and um, to get that to get that uh up and running, and he was also responsible for um helping get um Frederick Douglass's funeral in Rochester. New York, um, take place. Hey, so oh, he probably, he probably that did that. He probably did that statue for like fifty dollars, huh? <laughs> Shoot, <laughs> we know our hustlers do it. Shit, Word, man, he, he got he got a lot of people involved. So like that right there is 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 great to know, you know. And and I do want to know more. I do want to know more. So I'm definitely check out Twenty Three and Me. Like, and uh, we just started a like from my great great grandfather's side like we just started uh linking with uh the family that that he has like on on his side that we didn't even know about um we found out about that like a couple months ago so you know it's really about us trying to find out our culture too you know like what what our initial culture was like instead of it just being what we have now like a lot of our culture was adapted from other cultures itself or you know, based on survival, you know? Yeah, I think, like, uh, 
I'm going to say, sorry to interrupt you, but I think especially yeah. like while a lot of these racist protests, and I think it's because you got stuff like 23andMe and you got these family tree things. So then you realize, like, you got like, it don't matter, like, you got, like me, I said, I know I got white people in my in my family tree, and yeah. I know they did great things. So what, I'm going to I'm gonna say, oh, they was white, fuck them? No, because I wouldn't even be here. No. So it's like, no. like, once you start, I think that's why they always want you to, like, not stay on that black white because once you start digging and you figure out who you are you can't be like that you know what i'm saying so it's like it's just knowledge yourself they always say knowledge yourself yeah like you never know i could i could do 23 and me and find out that i'm like 90 percent indian or something like that you never know we we never know until we find it out like we don't know or we don't know where we come from we know that is most likely africa <laughs> But we don't we don't know where our family tree starts, you know, and that's the only way we can figure it out. So I'm definitely gonna do that. Well, yeah, man. It's crazy. I appreciate having you on, man. Likewise, I'm I'm glad that we was just able to talk about a whole bunch of different stuff. Like this is a this is a regular conversation that I normally have, and 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 I love it. You know, I'm definitely down to talk again, and um, you know, we'll keep we'll we'll definitely keep you in touch when we have some dope shit coming. Yeah, I'm going to have to bring you on um, just two black brothers, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me know. I'll be down. Of course. All uh, right. You want to give me your social media again? Yeah, my uh, my IG is Instagram. That's I-N-F-S-T-A-G-R-A-M. My Twitter is Infcaso, I-N-F-C-A-S-S-O. And my Facebook is uh, Inf of H-C-M. So Facebook.com slash Inf of H-C-M. And uh, our website is this is hcm.com. Um, you can also follow HCM is the gang on all social media platforms. It's the same. Uh, uh, Twitter, IG, um, Facebook, SoundCloud, uh, Audio Mac. It's it's all HCM is the gang. And that hashtag as well. HCM is the gang hashtag. Um, you'll see pretty much everything we're doing. All right, bro. Please. All right.